Hi, in this video, we will uh, look into, we will discuss uh, a bit about a context-free grammar as well as the push-down machine. Okay, so why is it that we want to look further into a context-free grammar? Because uh, if you uh, remember in our previous lecture, we have a look into uh, four different class of a grammar. We have uh, unrestricted, we have uh, context sensitive, we have a context free grammar and also right linear grammar or regular grammar. Okay, so we now we want to use a context free grammar to look into uh, how we can transform it into a Becker's normal form representations. Why? Because the context free grammar is the one that usually used in programming language. So that's why we choose a context free grammar as the one that uh, we want to represent it here yeah, to discuss. So what is a Becker's normal form? Becker's normal form is a way to represent your grammar, another way to represent your grammar instead of using your uh, context-free grammar. Okay, If you look into uh, the example here, we can uh, convert our context-free grammar into the BNF, uh, BNF context normal form. Okay. What would be the difference for a Becker's normal form for non-terminal symbol? We will we will represent it using a angle bracket. Means that we enclose the non-terminal inside the angle bracket. For arrow, we will replace it with a colon, double colon, followed by equal sign. Okay. Uh, what would be the benefit of a Becker's normal form here? Okay, if you see in the context-free grammar example here, S goes to S A S P. So normally, uh, usually in this context, in our lecture, we we'll normally say that if it is a capital letter, it is a non-terminal, and if it is a small letter, it is a terminal. Okay, but that is not the 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 case eh? it's not normally the case because if you look the other examples in internet in other book in other powerpoint slides on the net you might find out you might see that some will be using a small letter as a non-terminal symbol as well okay so that will create confusion confusion yeah so that is why uh, it, that is the importance of a Becker's normal form so we can exactly differentiate between non-terminal and uh, terminal symbols. But for this lecture, for our, our syllabus, we normally will assume that if you see that it's a, if, if it is not mentioned, then we will assume that capital letter is a non-terminal, small letter is a terminal. Okay, so how Becker's normal form resolve that uh, confusion? Okay, let's look here. S goes to A, S, B. So any uh, the the any non-terminal symbols will be placed under will be enclosed under angle bracket. So we know exactly this is non-terminal symbol. Okay, and the arrow here is uh, represented using colon and followed by equal sign. So this is the Becker's normal form. Okay, look at the second example here. We have S goes to A, S, B. S also can goes to epsilon, means that S can goes to two derivations. So in the Becker's normal form, we can represent it using a vertical bar. Vertical bar here would mean all. Yeah, would mean all. So, when we see that vertical bar, uh, bar uh, the derivation, either you can choose uh, the first one here or you can choose the second one here. So, uh, the second one here is actually an epsilon yeah, in this arrow here. Okay. Epsilon. So, that, that is the uh, representations uh, using a Becker's normal form. Okay, and how we convert it from the context-free grammar into a Becker's normal form. 
Now we look into some terminology that normally used in a grammar uh, when, we, uh, when we talk about a grammar. Okay, we have a left and rightmost derivation. So what is it? Leftmost derivation is one in which the leftmost non-terminal is always the one to which a rule is applied. Rightmost derivation is one in which the rightmost non-terminal is always uh, the one which a rule applies. So the keywords here is that non-terminal. Rightmost non-terminal and leftmost non-terminal. So for example, if we have a, a rules as goes to A, B, C. Okay. So the leftmost derivation means that we derive our rules from the leftmost non-terminal, so from the left side. If we say the rightmost derivation means that we derive our uh, rules from the left or the rightmost uh, non-terminal, so start from B. Yeah? So we, we essentially start from B. Okay. Two special of uh, two special types of linear grammar. Eh? Linear grammar. We have a right linear and also a left linear grammar. Okay. So what is it? What is a left linear? What is it? A uh, right linear. Okay. For example, we have uh, as uh, two rows. S goes to uh, a one, and another one is S goes to one a. So which one is a left? Uh, linear, which is a uh, right linear. Re uh, linear grammar is a uh, regular grammar, eh? the type 3 grammar. Okay, left linear, what means that uh, if you look into the definitions here, is for the left linear, all non terminal symbols in the right hand side are the left, are at the left end. So, this, uh, the one after arrow is the right hand side the one before the arrow is the left hand side so we want to look into the right hand side so it says here all non terminals in right hand side so what is the non terminal on the right hand side here is a so a must be r at the left end so this is a must be at the left end so it is at the left of the terminal here okay so this is what we call as left linear what about the right linear? Right linear is the opposite. So we look again into the right hand sides of the, of the rules and we see the non-terminal. So the non-terminal here is A. So the non-terminal must be on the right side, on the right end, yeah? on the right end of the right side rules. Yeah? So the right hand side rules is here. Okay, so the right end will be A will be must be on the right end of that rules. So this is called right linear. This is a left linear. Okay, okay, this is the left and the rightmost derivations. Okay, so uh, uh, that is a bit about uh, context-free grammar, how we convert into Becker's normal form and some terminology. Uh, before we go further, so you need to understand the terminology. Some of the questions that will ask you to uh, to write, actually write a grammar of a right linear, write a grammar of a left linear. So you must know which one is it. Okay, you must understand. Okay, uh, or, or derive a grammar using a right left derivations. Okay, so you must know which one is left derivation, which is which is the right der derivations. Okay, now we look further into a push down machine. Okay, push down machine, uh, it was quite similar to a finite state machine that we looked before, that we have learned before. But a uh, finite state machine is used for the phase one. Phase one of the compiler is a lexical analysis. Okay, but a push down uh, machine is used in the second phase of compiler, which is for syntax analysis. Okay, so what would be the difference? They're quite similar, but they have some differences. So what is it? Um, push down machine, they also have a tuples. Just like a finite set machine, they have several tuples. So in push down machine, they have also several tuples. So what are they? Uh, first one is the, these are all the tuples, yeah? So first one, a finite set of states. 
one of which is designated the starting state. Okay. The same as a final step machine, they have several states. You can have S1, S2, S3, they have several states, finite states. But and one of it, one of it must be a starting state. So the same. This is the same with a finite state machine, FSM. Second tuple. A finite set of input symbol, the, the input alphabet. This is also the same as a finite step machine. Uh, finite step machine also have in, input alphabet. Uh, normally, it will tell you what will be input al alphabet. Uh, maybe 0, 1, maybe A, B, maybe something else. Okay, They must have input symbols. And uh, the third one is a, in, an infinite stack. And a finite set of stack symbol which may be pushed on top or removed from top of the stack in the last in first out manner. Okay, so this is the different. Okay, this is one of it. Okay, uh, in a finite stack machine we don't have stack. Okay, we don't have stack. We only have state. But in a push down machine we have stack. So in the stack we have operations of push and pop means that we can push and pop our input symbol inside the stack. We have a stack. Eh? Uh, stack normally will look like this. So the input symbol we goes into the stack. Okay. So the operation will be either you push, you put it inside, or either you pop. Pop means you take it out. You take it out either to the, uh, you take it out from the stack. Uh, it, it, it doesn't mean that you have to you push you push it in, into another stack. No, you can push means that you delete it. Okay, you take it out from the stack. That is pop. Uh, a pop. A pop is to remove. Push is to push it inside the stack. Means that you insert. Push would mean insert to the stack. Pop is delete it from the stack. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, how to do that? It must be in the last in, first out manner. So, let's say in your stack, you have insert X, Y, Z. So, the first in, they said last in will be the first out. So, Z will be the last one who get in. This must be the first one to be popped, to be removed. So, that, that is the operations. Eh? Okay. Uh, and then the next tuple is a state transition functions. The same thing in the final step machine. Also, you have a state transition function. Means that uh, from one step to another step, you have a transitions. Okay, S two, S one to S two, for example. Okay, in in uh, in the stack also you have like uh, for example uh, this stack, this stack is S one. Uh, maybe uh, the next on the input A, you might go to another step, or you can go to the S1 back. Okay, so that is a transitions functions. Uh, the stack operation. So uh, this is another uh, difference between a uh, push down and finite state. Okay. So this, this is the different. It's also difference. Okay. Uh, in finite state machine, you don't have this operation push and pop. But in a push down, uh, push down machine, you have it because you have a stack. For push, they have. Uh, you must have input variable uh, input symbol you need to have input symbol okay uh, the the imp the stack symbol uh, to to push okay but pop you just but but for pop they will pop the one on top of the stack so they don't have to indicate what to pop so normally it will pop it will remove the one on the top of the stack but if for push they need to know what is the input symbol to push in what what is the stack symbol to push in yeah. uh, not the input symbol yeah. uh, the stack symbol okay uh, next one is a stack transition may include an exit from the machine level either accept or reject okay this is also quite uh, different because in the final step machine normally you will end uh, you will know that either the string is accepted or rejected by uh, reading all the input symbol and the last input symbol must be at accepting state okay but in the push down machine they have an exit 
uh, exit what we call that exit functions so uh, at the exit uh, function uh, transition state uh, it will determine either the string will be accepted or rejected we will see in, we will see the examples yeah so this is how it looks like okay normally you will be given a table like this so this is your push down table so we have a s1 and s2 so means that you have two state here okay uh, this is the X and the, the, the symbol, this symbol is actually the stack symbol, okay? So, the, the, the symbol like uh, enter here actually is to determine the end of string, the end of the input symbol, and this is determine the end of input symbol. Okay, and uh, the one on the column here, A, B, and the symbol here is the, uh, the, uh, it will indicate the start symbol. Eh? This this symbol, the the like the one like triangle, is to indicate the start. Uh, to to indicate um, uh, the bottom of the stack. Uh, to indicate the bottom of the stack. Eh? Normally, uh, you must the initial stack must have this symbol to indicate the bottom of the stack. So the one A and B is the input symbol. This is input symbol. Input symbol uh, x and this uh, enter uh, symbol okay is the stack symbol stack symbol yeah okay okay so how how to read it okay you this is the initial state this will be the initial state okay so you, you must start with s1 here so if you look here uh, start with an initial state is S1. Uh, this machine actually will read input A, A, B, B. If you look into here, this is example. Machine accept input string A, A, B, B. So you have to read from A, A, B, B. So the first one is A. So S1 on input A. So S1. So this is your S1. Okay. On input A, this is A. So what you do is push X and advance to 1. So you means that you need to push the X inside your stack. So this is your X. And your stack is still S1. Okay. Now you add S1. The next input is A as well. The second input is A. So S1 on input A. So what you do, S1. S1 on input A, what you do, push X, advance to 1. So you push another X inside push at and inside and you still at s1 so next input symbol is b so you are still on s1 but b so s1 b so s1 here uh, goes to b is pop advance to s2 pop advance to s2 so what you need to do is it pop means that it remove whatever on the top of your stacks and the stack will be s2 so next symbol is B, so S to B. So now you have moved to S2. S2, B, pop, advance to S2. So it means that uh, whatever on top of stack, it will remove, and pop, and now your stack is S2. So that is the end of the string. So end, end of the string will indicate by this symbol, uh, uh, enters, uh, uh, the enter delimiter. Okay, enter delimiter. So you are now on stack S2. The S2 on the enter delimiter here is accept. So AABB is accepted in this particular pushdown machine. So that is how you read a pushdown machines. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's that's the uh, lesson for today. For next lesson, we will look into the ambiguity in a programming language. So thank you very much.